Hi guys, it's Siri, so welcome back to my channel. Welcome to the month of March. It is very soon gonna be spring. I'm so excited. And if you wanna know which books I'm reading this month, don't forget to check out my TBR. But today we're talking about the books that I read last month, which was February. In February, I ended up reading only eight books and that's that might be a lot to some people, but to me it's really not, especially considering that I did have a lot more free time this month than I would normally because I didn't have as much uni. Um, but I still didn't read more than that and it's kind of disappointing. I was procrastinating a lot on reading. Anyway, since I am now doing TBRs, it kind of makes sense to compare um, how much of that I actually get to. So here are all the books I was planning to read for March, uh, for February, sorry. I chose 10 books and of those 10 books I read four. So that's not very good, I think. Next, I want to talk about the stats as always in terms of ratings. I had one one star, one two star, three three stars, three four stars and zero five stars. And that comes to an, to an average rating of exactly three stars. So very, very middle of the road here. Genres, I had five fantasy books, one mystery, one sci-fi and one nonfiction. In terms of pages, because some of these books were a little bit on the longer side, I ended up reading in total 3,182 pages, which comes to an average of 114 a day and 398 a book. So yes, I did read quite a bit. It just didn't seem enough to me, I guess. In terms of settings, I had four set in the US, two in the UK and two in a fantasy setting. So kind of boring there. I read two new to me authors and six that were not new to me. And seven of the books I read were very hyped, whereas only one was rather obscure. And for release years, I had one in 1957, one in 1960, five between 2010 and 2018, and then one in 2019. That that's it for the stats. Now let's talk about some reviews. My one star won't be a surprise to anybody because that is Lady Midnight by Cassandra Clare. I read this at the very beginning slash the end actually of January. It was terrible. I did a whole entire review for it. You can watch that. I did a vlog for it. You can watch that. I won't talk more about it, but it was obviously shit. <laughs> In all fairness though, my two star book was so much more disappointing because it was a sequel and it really, really let me down. And that was The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the second book in The Raven Cycle. And I read The Raven Boys in January. I gave it four stars or 4.5 stars. I don't remember. I really, really enjoyed that book. I thought it was so cool and different and I love the characters and I love the like whimsical atmospheric way that it was written. But The Dream Thieves, holy shit. What is wrong with this book? Can somebody explain that to me, please? You can check out my Goodreads review if you want to have like a written version. But basically, this book to me just felt so directionless. That's the best way I can explain it. Book one and again, book three, which I've, I'm going to talk about later, had a clear goal. So obviously this entire series has the overarching goal of the search for Glendower, but there's in the series, there's supposed to be like an overarching goal and then smaller, like intermediate goals, like sh short and midterm goals to keep you interested. And this book had nothing. The first 200 pages of this, absolutely nothing happened. And if you know me, I don't really mind that. I like books that focus on characters and don't have the most like fast paced like full packed plot. I don't really care about that, but there still needs to be a point to the character's actions. There still needs to be some sort of a red thread that like runs through the book that you can like follow, that you can keep track of, that you're like aware of their motivations. And that was just non-existent in this book. So each of the books in the series focuses on one specific character. I've come to realize now at book four, but basically this book focuses on Ronan and his abilities when it comes to dreaming. And while I find that to be quite an interesting like concept, I just couldn't really connect with it and I couldn't really connect with his characters. While I think it's fine that a book focuses on one character above others, this book felt like it was really pushing just all the others in the background. They literally did nothing. Gansey did nothing. Noah did nothing. Blue did nothing. And Adam was truly annoying and problematic and besides that did nothing. I love this series for the characters and not necessarily as individuals, 
but as a whole, as a dynamic, as a friendship group. And this book to me felt like it was just breaking that apart. It didn't give them enough interactions with one another and thereby failed to draw me in the way that the first book did. This book is so, so long and yet they did not somehow find the time to let the group grow as a group and as friends and like make their relationships more complex and complicated. Instead, it was kind of just like more of the same. None of them really grew aside from Ronan and even he was very erratic and his development. My favorite thing about this book was his relationship situation with Kavinsky, I think that's his name. Um, this guy that he does like street racing with, but it just was not fleshed out enough at all. I think there could have been so much more time devoted to it. It felt very one dimensional. Also in this book, we focus a lot on the gray man, which is this new character that's introduced. And I just did not care about him at all. I don't even care about him now at the end of the series. I think he is an interesting character, but he's not interesting enough to take up so much time in this book. And that's kind of what it boils down to. So much time. This book is so long. It's over 400 pages. And so much of that time is not devoted to the things that made me personally fall in love with the series or with the first book and taken away from the things that I consider important and just wasted on a bunch of stuff that's half formed, not fully there, not continuing to be relevant in the sequels. And I just am so annoyed. And this book made me really, really sad and kind of lose my faith faith in the series. I do know that this is some people's favorite book in the series, which to me is mind blowing and I don't understand it. So if you're one of these people, please, illuminate that for me like why in particular do you like this book so much because I seriously didn't I was just mad by the end of it and I wish this was not part of the series I think his sort of arc like Ronan's arc and self-discovery whatever could have been like done on the side very quickly in one of the other books like book two or something uh, or book three I guess well the new book two if this one didn't exist um, <laughs> so yeah, I don't know why he needed a whole book. I don't think it was worth it, really. Then we come to my three star reads. The first is The Silkworm by Robert Galbraith, book two in the Corman Strike series. I read the first book last year. I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it about four stars. This is a continuation in this mystery series. It follows a new case where an author disappears and Strike is asked by um, his wife to try and find him. And then his body is discovered, murdered, in a way that reflects the, a murder scene in his latest book and a lot of people from his like close friendship and like relationship circles um, seem to make an appearance as fictional characters in this book so that's kind of the setup of the mystery I thought that was really interesting and like I kind of like author murder so like this trope of like killings happening based on a book. I don't know why. I find that really fascinating and gruesome, obviously, but fascinating. However, this book to me had kind of a lot of flaws, especially compared to the first. First of all, I think that both the characters of Cormoran and Robin that I really liked in book one were not likable at all in this book. And I know Cormoran himself isn't supposed to be super likable to begin with, but he did have a lot of redeeming qualities, I think, in book one. Whereas here, he's just annoying and self pitying and refusing help from people that just want to be fr his friend and like help him and I just find that so annoying in people and Robin was very similar in terms of frustration levels because she was just like ceding any and all power over her life over to her husband or future husband I don't think they're married yet but he is such a dick and like there's no particular reason why she would be in love with him but yet she continues to be somehow and it's just frustrating to read about again. The mystery itself I found was again interesting in the premise but not super exciting in the execution. These books are always very slow paced and well as you know I don't always mind that. In this case I just there wasn't enough to make up for that slow pace like I didn't really care about the investigation characters like Robin and Cormoran and I didn't really care about the mystery so it was kind of just like a uh yeah I guess this kind of cool the resolution is kind of cool but at the same time it didn't like fully grip me so I guess a three star rating is kind of generous actually in this case. I am still going to continue the series but this was definitely not my favorite. Next I have The Obelisk Gate by Anke Jemisin. This is book two in the Broken Earth trilogy. The first book was called um, The Fifth Season. I read that back in December and I really enjoyed it. 
This one is difficult to describe. So first of all, my overall issues with the series lay mainly in its writing style. It's written quite confusing at times. Sometimes it's quite difficult to get the information that you need to like fully understand every situation that the characters are in and that's kind of annoying. This book follows Essence um, perspective for the most part so it's for the most part written in second person which I've said a million times I hate with every fiber of my being so that's a huge minus and I thought I would probably get used to it by book two but I'm still not. I'm still struggling. I still don't understand why this is absolutely necessary for this book. Overall, this book just felt really badly like a middle book um, that was just there to try and get you to book three, like to the point where book three can happen um, without really contributing anything super interesting itself. It's quite slow paced. Again, there's too much Essen, who I don't really like. Uh, not enough Nassen, who I do like. I still really care about the concept and the world and I cannot wait to see how it ends and like where it goes but also I'm frustrated I'm just I'm frustrated <laughs> and for my last three star read I actually rated this book 3.5 stars and that is Dark Shores by Janelle L. Jensen as you might know this is an arc I wanted in a giveaway by the author and I was so excited because Danielle L. Jensen is one of my favorite authors she wrote the Stolen Songbird trilogy which I adore I read like a million times this book comes out in May by the way in case you're curious it's set in a world that is inspired by the Roman Empire or like ancient Rome and I adored that from the get-go because I've never read a book set in that in a like a fantasy world inspired by that I thought that was really really cool it follows a girl called Teriana who is from a seafaring nation called the Marin and um, they have the ability basically as the only people on the earth to travel between the eastern half of the world and the western half of the world because there's like the high seas separating them. In the eastern half of the world is where this Roman inspired empire rules whereas in the west um, there's kind of more of these like wilder people. I'm not really sure what to call them but they don't have one consolidated empire. It's like different nations that kind of do their own thing. Our second main character is Marcus. He's the commander of a legion of that. Um, it's called the Salander Empire and he has a secret that he doesn't want anybody to find out and he gets pressured by a high-ranking politician to basically become his minion and just do his bidding. So the two halves of this world don't know that the other exists but at the beginning of the book the Salander Empire does find out about this as of yet unconquered part of the world. So they basically force Teriana and her people to show them the way, take them there and Marcus and his legion is part of the sort of contingent of people that they send over there to basically conquer it. I have very mixed feelings about this book. My first one is probably that I'm a little bit disappointed because I didn't love it quite as much as I loved Stolen Songbird. I do really like Danielle Jensen's writing style as always. I think she writes very beautifully and I will literally read anything she writes. Love that on like a sentence word level. It's amazing. I also really like this Roman Empire inspired world because it's very different from anything I've read before even though there are a few like inconsistencies. For example on the blurb it says that Tyriana is a pirate and like she's from this pirate nation but literally there's not a single instance of piracy in this entire book they are basically just merchants between the east and the west so they just sell wares like that's not piracy and it just kind of felt a little bit like ah oh, you just put that on the blurb to like make it sound cooler but it's not really she's not really a pirate and that's a little bit a little bit underwhelming I guess. I also really liked a lot of the side characters in this. They're quite well fleshed out for being side characters and I just enjoyed them. They kind of just added a lot to the overall story and I think that made it flow really well, the book as a whole. But while the world was interesting and different, it didn't feel like it was fleshed out enough. Like this is very different to again Stolen Songbird. I'm just comparing the two because I have them like in my brain like side by side. Basically Stolen Songbird is still set in like um a real world inspired world so there's not a lot of world building needed whereas this book is very very different so there's obviously more need to explain where this is actually set at and I don't think that was given enough time it wasn't done in enough detail I didn't really feel like I could fully imagine it there's these like synthier I think is what it's called stems that you can use to travel but that's never even remotely explained and I just found that really strange like you're 
ex invented this whole new thing, you need to give me a little bit more to be able to like picture what it actually does. I also had a lot of trouble connecting with the main character of Teriana. I found her really obnoxious and annoying at times and oh, most of the time. And this book has kind of made me realize how tired I am of these badass strong heroines that are only strong in the sense that they're sassy and bratty and bitchy and are supposedly good with words like to me that doesn't make a strong character in my opinion it actually makes her seem a lot weaker because she's always on the defense and it's so annoying like sure being witty and like making fun of people here and there is cool and fun and i personally am also somebody like that i like sarcasm i like being funny and ironic like that's not a problem at all but to be like that all the time and to take everything and anything as an insult and to use every single situation to insult somebody else is annoying you need to stop that shit if you're that kind of person you will not have any friends but teriana of course is beloved by everybody in this entire book marcus's entire legion basically falls in love with her because she's so witty and cool and different and like i'm just i just i'm not seeing it there's for me there's no reason why anybody would like her let alone everybody would like her so yeah i had a lot of issues with her the romance in this also felt a little bit forced it's another hate to love romance like stolen songbird but whereas in stolen songbird i felt like it was done perfectly this book didn't quite deliver on that same level of like it just works. You could really tell the book was struggling with like um, walking the line between making Marcus seem unlikable to Teriana but likable to the reader but also likable to Teriana in the future and that's a very difficult thing to straddle and it just didn't work and it made the characters seem all over the place and like their actions and reactions to things just didn't always make 100% sense. So overall I had a fun time reading this book and I'll definitely be reading the sequels but I don't think that this is what it could have been and in my opinion should have been. I do hope the author continues to work on this world and like develop it as the sequels happen and also hopefully change up Tariana's character a little bit or like give her some growth or or some direction to develop into because right now I literally cannot stand her at all. So those are my thoughts. I am disappointed a little bit. I still had a fun time. It's still a good book I think but not as strong as it could be. Let's talk about my four stars. So this is gonna be happier part of this video. Okay, I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm excited. The first is thankfully Blue Lily Lily Blue by Maggie Steve out of book three in the Raven Cycle. Oh my God, after book two being so shit, I was very scared because I loved the first book. I wanted to love this whole series. And finally, this book came through again. I'm so excited. I literally was like, hallelujah. Thank God, thank Jesus, thank everyone. Like, this is amazing. The biggest difference to me was that this book finally had a point again. It had a goal, a short-term mid-term goal that the characters were working towards and that changed the entire game for me whereas in book two it just they were just flailing about doing random things that seemed very disconnected and didn't seem to go anywhere in this book everything had a point they were searching for somebody that had disappeared and everything was like focused on that and like oriented towards that even when it didn't have something directly to do with it and that's just to me how you write good books. That's like a very integral part of telling a good story is having some motivation, having something to work towards. And this book gave us that again. I'm so happy. Where book two focused on Ronan, this book focused on Adam, but I still felt like it left enough breathing room or more breathing room for the other characters to also be there and be a part of it, which I prefer a lot. Gansey and Blue are just the most adorable two little peaches <laughs> i don't know why i'm saying peaches they're just so cute together this is the cutest i will tell you like oh my god their romance is so cute it's so subtle and so sweet and they're just so precious that's like the best way to describe it they're precious and pure and i love it and i hope book four is gonna take that in the best of directions. Adam as a character was still kind of annoying to me in this book, but less than in book two. And he also seemed to realize some things that like 
helped him grow as a person. His main issue and my main issue with him is that he is convinced that any and all help he gets from his friends is charity and he just doesn't understand, in my opinion, the concept of friendship, which is to help each other, be there for each other. And, and he's very blinded by this idea that he needs to be doing everything himself, otherwise it's like you know, charity. I found it very exhausting to read about a person like that because that's just such a twisted worldview. And I obviously understand where this comes from for him, but that doesn't mean that I approve of it. This book just gave me hope for the series again. I really, really enjoyed it. And I think if you're like me and you didn't particularly like The Dream Thieves, I hope this also gives you hope. I used the word hope way too many times already because it does get better. And so far, The Raven Boys is also better. And it might just be like the one outlier in the Dream Thieves that um, did not work for me. Second to last, I have The Midwitch Cookies by John Wyndham. This is a classic sci-fi book, I guess. It's about a little town in Britain um, called Midwitch, where one day a strange object lands that puts everybody to sleep for a 24-hour period. And when they wake up, all the women in town are pregnant and the children that they bear are very strange. They seem to have weird skin and eyes and they learn super, super quickly and they realize that they aren't really human. So it's kind of about the inhabitants of this town as well as some outside people dealing with the situation and uh, examining the situation, trying to figure out what's happening, trying to figure out how to solve the issues, how to support the women how to prevent anything bad from happening. I really, really enjoyed this. It's a very strange little book and it's kind of creepy to think about, like this um, insidious type of alien invasion, which this essentially is, is super scary. Like if you have this overt foe and enemy, then you can fight it. But if that enemy literally is able to pose as your children and that, not actually pose, but be your children and like instill motherly and fatherly feelings in you, then that's super, super dangerous. To me, that's just what made this book especially creepy. It was a little bit slow paced at first, but once it found its stride, I couldn't stop reading. I was really invested. I really wanted to know what was happening next. And I was just excited to know um, where this would take me. One thing I do wish is that um, the characters in the book hadn't only really talked about these children that eventually grew into adults in like the third person or like they were sort of this object of scientific interest rather than talking with them. There's only one character really, one of the main characters, who has any sort of relationship with them and even that isn't really shown enough in my opinion and it just kind of baffled me how nobody thought to just sort of start a conversation with them. They were clearly intelligent, they were clearly capable of holding conversation, so why wouldn't you try to form some sort of dialogue, find out what they want, find out why they're here, what their goals are. Like maybe this isn't about like kill or be killed and rather about like how can we coexist. I just found this a really interesting thought-provoking little book. It kind of opened my eyes to this idea of like us humans having been on top of the food chain for so long now that we've really grown complacent and that we've I guess sort of lost the ability to defend this position if it were ever contested. That's to me really fascinating and definitely a unsettling idea. If you're interested in this type of thing, I highly recommend checking it out. I think it's really cool, really well written and definitely plays with your thoughts a little bit there. And then the best book I read this month was a 4.5 star read and that is Black Like Me by John Howard Griffin. This was my project TBR pick for this month and it is a non-fiction account of the author in the 1950s um, dyeing his skin and uh, taking on the life of a black man in the southern USA when segregation was very much still a thing. This book was incredibly well constructed and this entire project to me was very well constructed. I found it fascinating the things that he discovered kind of on the other side of this curtain that white people had erected between themselves and black people and it kind of showed really really well this sort of confirmation bias that um, a lot of white people everybody pretty much had at the time of um, this idea of what a black person is like and anybody that seemed to not fulfill this idea was deemed problematic and uppity and like trying to reach above their station. That in turn caused black people to try and act exactly according to the stereotypes as so as not to upset white people. And I just loved how John Hart Griffin explored this vicious circle and I do think contributed to breaking it eventually by putting out this book and like showing white people 
what actually lies behind this illusion that they had erected. What I particularly love about this book is how he doesn't try to speak for these people, he tries to give them a voice, he tries to um, let them say it, not necessarily as he views it, but as they view it. And I think that's super important in a situation like this. I also found it super fascinating how quickly he identified with his new black identity, I guess. Not necessarily in terms of the culture, because obviously he was only exposed to it for such a short period of time, but more with this sense of oppression and with this loss of self-worth that went along with it. And I think that just goes to show that any human that is consistently and continuously told that they are less than a full human is gonna take that and start believing it very, very quickly. I think this book should be required reading for pretty much anybody. I've read some reviews that said this book um, only speaks for its time and it's kind of useless after that. And I don't agree with that at all. I think that's very short-sighted. This happened barely like 60, 70 years ago. That's not that long of a time. And even though a lot has happened since then, it doesn't mean that there's still like aftershocks from this situation that are still felt today and I think it's really important to just take a look at this and, and just educate yourself I guess. And that is all for the books I read in February. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know how your February went, if you had a good, a bad, medium, a reading month or anything in between. If you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. I upload every Tuesday, Friday and Sunday and I will see you very soon with another video. Until then have a lovely week. Bye!